Live NFL trivia every Tuesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge and have a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. The San Francisco 49ers have been around for over 75 years at this point, and in that time, we've definitely seen our fair share of quarterback controversies with the team. You have the 2012 season, where Jim Harbaugh had to decide between Alex Smith and Colin Kaepernick. You have the battle between Steve Young and Joe Montana throughout the late 80s and early 90s. You have the 2003 season, where Terrell Owens openly expressed his displeasure toward Jeff Garcia. And you had a controversy between Garcia and Tim Rattay. And there have been plenty of other quarterback controversies and competitions in the storied history of the franchise. But there might not be anything that tops this. Because back in the 1960s, the 49ers were involved in what not only might be the craziest quarterback controversy in team history, but has a legitimate argument for being one of the craziest in league history. A quarterback moved to defense, only to be moved back to quarterback shortly after. Not one, but two quarterbacks outright refused to play for the team, and a head coach resigned in the wake of the madness. This is the wild story of the 1963 San Francisco 49ers and their insane quarterback controversy. Before I talk about the controversy at hand, we need some context as to how the Niners were playing, who the starting quarterback was supposed to be, and what led this controversy to even happening in the first place. In the first round of the 1957 NFL Draft, the 49ers drafted Stanford quarterback John Brody with the third overall pick. Over his first three seasons, he didn't play a whole lot, as he either rode the bench or split time with Y.A. Tittle, who despite being on the wrong side of 30, was playing relatively well. He was named a Pro Bowler and a first team All-Pro in 1957 after leading the league in completion percentage and after guiding the 49ers to the postseason, where they would infamously blow a 27-7 lead in the second half to the Detroit Lions. And two years later, in 1959, he was once again named a Pro Bowler. It seemed like Brody was going to be riding the pine for a while, as long as Tittle was playing at a high level. However, when 1960 rolled around, the 49ers got themselves a new head coach by the name of Red Hickey. And under Hickey, they started running the shotgun. Tittle had a groin injury, so Brody got some playing time, and he thrived under the system. San Francisco won four of their final five games. After starting the season with a 3-4 record, rebounded to finish above 500 at 7-5. The offense was doing pretty well with Brody under center in the second half of the season, scoring at least 23 points in four out of those final five games. And because of this, Hickey decided to roll with Brody in 1961. He traded Tittle to the New York Giants, where he went on to have some of the best years of his career and where he would cement his Hall of Fame legacy. It was a move that received some controversy, particularly because Tittle was a club legend, but in Hickey's eyes, the future was now, and it was time to throw Brody out there. And in 1961, Brody proved any doubters wrong by posting some really solid numbers and having a good year. He led the league by averaging 9 yards per attempt and 16.7 yards per completion, and finished 3rd in passing yards and 5th in passer rating. Brody was one of the better quarterbacks in football, and would build off of that in 1962 with another solid season. During that 1962 season, he had the second best completion percentage in football, only trailing Bart Starr in that department. Obviously, Brody was the guy in San Francisco going forward especially with Hickey returning as the team's head coach, even following the below 500 season where they lost their last five games at home. If Brody could stay healthy, he was going to be running San Francisco's offense in 1963. No question about it, but you can probably guess what happens next. During the 1963 preseason, there was some trouble brewing when Brody injured his passing arm. He injured his arm in some kind of car accident earlier in the season, but while it seemed to be on the mend by early September, that was not the case and it was hurting again. The Niners had one final preseason game against the Los Angeles Rams to try and get ready for the upcoming season, which when this news was combined with the fact that the Niners were 0-4 through their first four preseason games back when it actually meant something, that was not looking good. Still, Brody was going to try and shake things off in the preseason finale. He wanted to play and test the sore arm and see how it was. The Niners were hoping that this plan would make things better. It didn't. It only made things worse. The Niners lost 17 to nothing and Brody felt terrible. The team physician noted that this injury was a muscular strain related to a hairline fracture, and Brody said that with each passing day, the arm doesn't get any better. He said, I can't throw. I have to plant both feet in order to get the ball moving at all. Obviously, that's not a good sign when your quarterback can't throw the football comfortably, and it's also not a good sign when you only have one other quarterback on the roster in fourth-year man Bob Waters. With that, and with things getting no better for Brody, the Niners went searching for a quarterback to put on the roster. They settled on Sam Echeberry. He had played with the Cardinals in each of the past two seasons and in 1962 looked terrible, throwing two touchdowns and ten interceptions. However, despite his struggles in the NFL, he was a Canadian football legend, 
and is regarded by many as one of the greatest Canadian players of all time. He started nine seasons with the Montreal Alouettes, guiding them to three straight appearances of the Grey Cup during the mid-50s, and throwing for 4,723 passing yards in 1956, becoming the first quarterback in the history of professional football anywhere to cross the 4,000-yard mark. He seemed like the perfect fit to back up Brody in case anything happened to him, right? Well, this is where the fun really starts, because as the Niners were about to find out, the quarterback position seemed completely cursed. If Brody's arm was feeling sore, he wasn't showing it at the start at least. While his numbers weren't great by any means, they were respectable enough that he gave his team a chance at winning. On opening day against the Minnesota Vikings, he threw for 125 yards and a touchdown, and even ran for 42 yards, though the Niners lost the game. And the following week against the Baltimore Colts, he had a really good showing, completing 60% of his passes and throwing two touchdown passes. While the Niners had the lead going into the fourth quarter, Baltimore scored 10 unanswered to win the game, dropping the Niners to 0-2. The bad news, however, was that Brody's arm was still feeling sore, and the even worse news was that they were not impressed by Echeverry at all. Niners personnel had questions about which version of him we'd get, the 1950s version that was one of the greatest quarterbacks in the history of Canadian football, or the 1960s version that was awful in the NFL. They had their answer, they got the 1960s version. Echeverry was let go, and now the Niners needed a new backup quarterback. They knew that Brody's arm was a ticking time bomb at this point, and they couldn't have Waters, a quarterback with a completion percentage of 44% and a passer rating of 50 over the past two seasons, as the next and only man up. Knowing this, the Niners traded defensive back and former Pro Bowler Eddie Dove to the New York Giants in exchange for quarterback Ralph Guillaume. This seemed like a buy-low move, especially after what happened in Week 2, when Guillaume started for the Giants against the Pittsburgh Steelers and lost 31-0, throwing no touchdowns and two interceptions while completing just 33% of his passes and posting a passer rating of 15 which is worse than if he did nothing but spike the ball to the ground on every single play. Still, he was going to be the backup to Brody now, and the Niners were so set on making him the backup that they shifted Bob Waters over to defense. All Guyami had to do was show up, and it seemed like the Niners' backup situation was saved. Only problem? That never happened. When the Niners traded for Guyami, he had a pretty reasonable request. He wanted his contract to be guaranteed, and wanted a no-cut contract. He saw what just happened with Echeverry, and didn't want that happening to him, especially if he was going to move across the country. It makes sense why Guyami wanted his contract insured, seeing as he ran an insurance agency in Washington, D.C. When the Niners got this request, they decided that they weren't going to do that. And at that point, Guyami and the Niners got off on the wrong foot so badly that Guyami just decided to retire. He refused to report, and quit the game to run his insurance agency full-time. As he said, in a couple of weeks, maybe John Brody's arm will come around and they'll say, I'll see you. Or maybe they lose a couple more ball games and they clean house. Head coach Red Hickey was furious, saying that he couldn't see a boy making that kind of decision. And he put Waters back at quarterback, moving him from defensive back after just one day. And making this even more hysterical, the trade still went through. The Niners still sent Dove to the Giants, even though the trade could have been canceled. They just didn't want to keep Dove around anymore. So now the Niners once again needed a backup quarterback. Take two. The Niners tried again, and acquired Baltimore Colts quarterback Lamar McCann. McCann had been in the league for a decade, and was the second overall pick in the 1954 NFL Draft. Now while there were some bad moments, like when he led the league in interceptions as a rookie with 22, there were some good moments in there as well. Like in 1957, when he led the league with 18 yards per completion, and in 1960, when he started four games for the Green Bay Packers and went 4-0. He seemed like a capable backup. And when the Niners acquired him, once again, they were rejected. McCann found out about the news and told the team, I'll get back to you. Let me think about it. It's highly likely that he had the same reservations that Guyami did, and didn't want to move across the country if he wasn't guaranteed of anything. Once again, Waters, who moved back to defensive back, was now moving back to quarterback. Just to recap where we were at this point, the starting quarterback of the 49ers had a sore arm and couldn't throw a football. The backup quarterback was converted to a defensive back, and they converted back to a quarterback, and they converted back to a defensive back, and they converted back to a quarterback again all in the span of a few days. The man they wanted to be the backup quarterback retired and didn't report. And the other man they wanted to be the backup quarterback didn't report as well, meaning that despite acquiring two quarterbacks, the Niners were in the same situation that they started the weekend. As for how this crazy situation would finally play out, it was a chaotic mess. The Niners lost badly in Week 3 to the Minnesota Vikings, losing 45-14. Brody played horribly, going 7-18 for with no touchdowns, two picks, and a passer rating of 19, and was pulled for Bob Waters midway through the game. 
Brody would later be ruled out for an extended period of time with a sore arm, which would eventually lead him to missing the entire season. And after the game, which was San Francisco's 10th straight loss across regular season and preseason play, Red Hickey resigned and was replaced by Jack Christensen. After the Niners got their new head coach, they got a bit of good news when McCann decided to report. Whether it was because of the new head coach, or because of the quarterback situation, meaning that he was more likely to play and not get cut, or whether it was a combination of both, who knows. However, while the 1963 season went down the toilet for the Niners, as they finished with the worst record in football 2-12 and had the worst offense in the league, fortunately, John Brody's injury that year would not impact his career. After missing the final 11 games in 1963 with that sore arm, Brody returned in 1964 and played another decade with the Niners. He made two Pro Bowls, led the league in passing yards three times, led the league in passing touchdowns twice, and most notably in 1970, was named the MVP of the league, becoming the first player in Niners history to ever receive this award voted on by the Associated Press. Still, the 1963 San Francisco 49ers had one of the craziest quarterback controversies of all time, even if it didn't matter a whole lot past that isolated season. To acquire two quarterbacks and have both of them initially refuse to play for you, and to be forced to put in your backup quarterback who you openly stated needed to be replaced, and who you changed to a defensive back multiple times in the week leading up to the game, and for this whole situation to result in a head coach stepping down is absolutely nuts. I think it's safe to say that we're probably never going to see anything like this ever happening again. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com, and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Monday and Tuesday night at 9pm Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at jrgear9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JJ9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for upcoming the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.